There's yttrium, ytterbium, actinium, rubidium, a boron, gadolinium, niobium, iridium, and strontium, and silicon, and silver, and samarium, and bismuth, chromium, lithium, beryllium, and barium. Welcome to the ethylene and addition polymer video on the scientific terms. Now this video is important because it actually goes over the scientific terms which were mentioned in your syllabus and also throughout the videos. And those are important because they could come in your HSC exam questions. They could actually be in the question itself or they could be very useful to add those kind of terms in your answers. So I'll go over them one by one. First we have ethylene. Ethylene is a two carbon alkene. And I'll go over again what an alkene is in a second. Ethane, on the other hand, is a two carbon, so F stands for two, but it's an alkane. I'll go over that one as well in a second. Cracking, that's the breaking of longer chain hydrocarbons, so long chain hydrocarbons into smaller hydrocarbons. So, for example, breaking decane into ethane. We can do it for catalytic cracking or thermal cracking. Catalytic cracking usually means we use some sort of metal or enzyme to make that happen. Thermal is temperature, so in this case we use temperature to crack. Those were two different types. Fractions of petroleum. That was your components that make up petroleum. So we have, you know, long chain ones. We have gas. We have petrol. So petroleum is a mixture. And fractions of petroleum are the individual parts that make it up, make up petroleum. Higher activity. That's the likelihood of two um, particles combining. So if it's unreactive, that means they won't combine. Whereas if it's reactive, that means they will combine. Alkenes. This was the general structural form of CN, H2N, and the alkenes, that they have a double bond. That's what alkenes are. Whereas alkanes have CN, H2N, plus 2. So you have two more hydrogens than your alkenes, but they have no double bond. Hydrocarbons, that was just a chain of hydrogen plus carbons. So that was, you know, if you have C and Hs all over the place, that's your hydrocarbons. Octane, this is used for fuel and it's an 8-carbon alkane. So it has no double bonds and it has 8 carbon in its chain. Functional groups, that's a part of the compound that gives it its function. So for example, we have an alka with a uh, ethanol, it has an OH group, and that makes it different to an ethane. So it's that part that makes it different from other ones. That's its functional group. Addition, addition is the adding of atoms without any loss. So if we're only adding atoms to molecules, but there's nothing lost, that's addition and an addition reaction. Whereas a substitution reaction, that's if we swap one atom for another. Right? So for example, I'm going to explain how we create vinyl chloride in a second. In vinyl chloride, we actually swap a hydrogen for a chlorine. A zeolite catalyst, that was used in catalytic cracking. So we said in catalytic cracking, we have something that speeds up reaction. In this case, we use a zeolite catalyst to speed that reaction up. Bromination, that was adding bromine onto molecules. And you had a te a experiment where you had bromine water and the bromine added onto your ethylene, and that was bromination. Hydration, hydration was the adding of water molecules. So if you add water molecules onto an actual compound, that's hydration. Styrene, or the uh, scientific name is ethylbenzene, it was this monomer here. So it's, it has this normal ethylene backbone, but one of the actual hydrogens got substituted for a benzene group. This is the benzene group. So that was a substitution reaction to make that happen. Vinyl chloride, or the scientific name chloroethene, was a monomer which looked like this. And again, it had one of its hydrogens substituted for a chlorine. So it was a hydrogen before and now it's a chlorine. And this is vinyl chloride. Monomers are just one unit. So again, for example, this here is just one unit, and then if you add them together, it becomes a polymer. So polymer are many units joined together. So monomers joined together. So one, of, one after the other makes a polymer. In addition, polymer was a joining together of monomers. That's important, but also without a loss. So you don't lose anything. So condensation polymer, which will come in the next chapter, you lose a water molecule when that happens, when they're two joined together. Whereas in addition, polymer, you have nothing lost, only stuff added. Polyethylene. That was ethylene, which is your monomer. Them joined together, quite a few of them, making polyethylene. And then we have two different types. We have high-density polyethylene. And high-density polyethylene is a polyethylene that is a straight molecule. So this one, each of these lines is one. We've got lots of them straight, all next to each other. So in one small space, we have high amounts of them, which means it's high-density polyethylene. 
linear polymer, that's straight polymer. So we said high density polyethylene was a straight polymer. Low density polyethylene, that is a polyethylene that is branched. So what I mean by branched, it's the next part here. Branch polymers, polymer with branches. So instead of being just straight, it has also has these branches coming off. And because it has these branches, we can't fit that many close together. And that's why it's called a low density polyethylene. Because it's one area we only can fit a certain amount of them together. A metallocene catalyst that helps produce high density polyethylene. So that was a catalyst used to produce high density polyethylene. And a peroxide radical. That was the species was, which was used to start the production chain reaction when it comes to production of low density polyethylene. So hope that was useful. Thank you for watching.